Hello, and welcome to this demonstration of Cisco Service Grid. For enterprises, managing service cases with many different third-party vendors is a challenge as each vendor uses their own ticketing systems and escalation processes. This creates longer mean time to resolution and can lead to 10 times the cost for issue resolution. By using Service Grid, you get standardized integration methods and maintain only one connection to your entire service provider ecosystem. You can save 40% time on mean time to resolution. But how does Service Grid do this? The Service Grid core is a standard component that provides a set of well-defined workflow definitions to support service requests, incident, problem, and change processes. Instead of mapping workflows one by one to the connected partners, they are mapped to the standardized core workflow only once. The aim is to provide each service provider with a well-defined workflow definition, which can be used as standardized mapping to other service partners. The principle of double translation is used to map processes and workflows within Service Grid. All data is translated into a normalized format, enabling Service Grid to connect and integrate different service processes and systems very quickly. Now, let's take a look at Service Grid in action. Bob in Enterprise IT has just received an open ticket in his ticketing system from Joe, saying Joe is having issues with his SAP. So Bob creates a ticket for Joe's SAP issue and indicates he is going to try and fix his issue before escalating it to his outside vendor. When he saves the ticket, a corresponding incident ticket, or what we call a shadow ticket, is sent to Service Grid in the background. Service Grid receives the ticket and assigns a vendor ticket number to the incident. And we see that Service Grid has acknowledged the ticket, recorded it, and created a shadow ticket. All Bob had to do to notify his vendor about the issue is to create the ticket in his own ticketing system. Service Grid automatically sends a notice to Bob's third-party vendor about his issue. Let's look at this idea of a shadow ticket from the vendor side. The shadow ticket in Service Grid causes Sam at Service Pro to see Bob's SAP issue pop up in his ticketing system queue. Through Service Grid's creation of this shadow ticket, Sam now knows of Bob's issue even though Bob has not indicated that he needs Sam's help yet. This is what helps improve mean time to resolution for incident escalations. Also, everything that Bob does to try and resolve the problem is logged and transferred to Sam through Service Grid, so Sam knows what has already been tried to fix the problem. By integrating with Service Grid, the issue resolution process is simplified. Clear and real-time communication occurs without needing multiple additional steps. Now let's take a look at Service Grid itself to see what it shows with Bob's ticket. This is the Service Grid console and in it we see the ticket at the top with ticket number 1474. Also in Service Grid, the case status shows acknowledge. If we click on it, we can pull up a detailed description that shows the ticket details. Bob and his third-party vendor would never have to access Service Grid because with its workflow and mapping, Service Grid enables Bob's ticketing system to communicate with his vendor's ticketing system, and both parties can keep their own issue resolution systems and processes. So now Bob's ticket through Service Grid has gone to the partner and has been acknowledged. Meanwhile, Bob gets to work to try and fix the SAP issue, but after trying several things, he decides to escalate it to his partner so he can step in. Bob goes into his ticketing system and changes the status of the issue to pending and sets the status reason to third-party vendor action required to escalate it to Sam at Service Pro. Once he saves this, he sees a message at the top of his console that shows the incident has been escalated to the service partner via Service Grid. Let's go back and check out Service Grid just to see what's going on in the background of this whole exchange. Notice now the case state in Service Grid indicates the issue has been assigned to the partner. Now Bob has had to escalate the issue to his third-party vendor Service Pro, and through Service Grid, the ticket has been properly assigned. Sam, the partner, receives the notice that Bob has escalated his issue, and he can also see what actions Bob has already tried to fix the problem, helping Sam avoid duplication of effort and resolve Bob's issue much faster. After reviewing Bob's details, Sam knows how to fix the issue, and he gets to work on it. Sam fixes the issue on his end, tells Bob to reboot his computer, and marks the issue as resolved. Service Grid then sends the resolved ticket back to Bob with Sam's instructions to reboot. If we look in Service Grid, we see the issue shows resolved, 
This information will also show up in Bob's ticketing system, and if Bob is happy with the resolution, he can close the case out. Here is the exchange status now. Bob receives the update that the issue was marked resolved and sees the instructions to reboot his computer. He is happy with the resolution, so he changes the resolve status to closed. This is the end of Bob's interaction with Sam, the partner. In Service Grid, we see that the case shows up as closed. When Bob closed a ticket on his ticketing system, Service Grid automatically closes it out in the vendor's queue, causing the issue to drop off the vendor's ticketing system without them having to do anything. This automation provides much more accurate mean time to resolution. Bob is happy because he knows when he has an issue, Service Grid provides real-time communication with his service partners so the issue is fixed faster. With Service Grid, Bob is one step ahead and can focus on what he does best, while Cisco Service Grid builds his integrated service ecosystem. For more information, visit cisco.com backslash go backslash service grid.